right, today's mini lecture is on the force method, which is a different way of solving statically indeterminate problems. Now, why do we need a different way? Uh, this will become clear in the next lecture when we talk about uh, thermal expansion. Um, but it's also just good to, to look at a problem in a different sense, right? Uh, because uh, seeing it in a different way can sometimes make it uh, clearer to us uh, or maybe gives us a, a, some insight into what's actually going on here. So again, we're going to look at the same problem here. Uh, we've got uh, a problem that we can't solve because of um, the indeterminacy of the y statics equation, right? We don't know the two support forces at A and B. And so we solved it by using a compatibility equation. We said, well, we know that the length between A and B isn't going to change. Uh, and that allowed us to find a second equation to solve the problem. Um, we're going to drop the compatibility equation. Instead, we're going to pretend for a moment that B isn't there. Um, and pretending's fun, right? So we'll, we'll have a good time here. What's going to happen if B isn't there? Well, that beam would stretch, right? We'd see some deformation between A uh, and B here, or A and C, I guess, here, um, but none between B and C, okay? And so we'd see a displacement at B that was the same as the delta of AC. So if we return to this situation, um, we need to apply, in order to, to go from here, our pretend situation with a delta P, we would have to apply a force at B, as you can see down here, in order uh, to get us back to our original condition. And so we're going to see if we can solve for that force. Okay, so now we've got um, our essentially our compatibility equation here is delta P, um, the, uh, if this is our force P, the delta caused by P has to be equal to the delta caused, uh, or rather, I'm sorry, that if this is our delta P, uh, the original deformation has to be equal to the deformation created by our support force. So in some ways, you can see that this is about superposition, right? We're saying, oh, this force is creating a, uh, a, a deformation, and then this force is creating a deformation. So what does this look like when we throw in our, um, uh, our deformation equations? It looks like here, that is, the length AC, right, this is the force of C, it's only affecting this part of the rod, right, just like we did when we dealt with the superposition problem, and this is affecting the whole length, right, from A to B, because that force is being applied at the bottom, okay. What this equation says is the deformation caused by force C is equal to the deformation caused by force B. And you can see, again, this is superposition here. And then, uh, just to sort of review what we did here, we solved by the deformation caused by force at C, added a second deformation caused by B, uh, and then we give ourselves, again, a solvable problem because it's given us a relationship between um, some of our unknowns here. So let's go ahead now and solve that problem. So if I um, divide out my AEs from the previous page and move L to the other side of the equation, I get this guy. Okay. Everything over here is known. So now I know my support force at B. And I can solve that problem. 
and we'll get the same answer that we found in the last lecture. Okay? So this is like, just like we did when we dealt with superposition, this is sort of the two approaches to the same problem that have to do with the fact that we can uh, we can either find the changes, the deformation in section by section, and set those two things as equal. Or we can say, oh, okay, the deformation changed by this force has to be the same as the deformation caused by this other force. And so the, the two ways we solved superposition problems is paralleled by the two ways that we solved uh, static indeterminate. And that's it for this one.